On today's episode of the Project Mullet Mustang presented by Turn 14 Distribution, we are back at NV Auto to wrap up installing all these white line goodies. My hands are still dirty from yesterday. Let's get to it. Pull that out, Ken Wagon. Pull it out. It's a struggle. All right. Ta-da! So there you go. We've removed the mount, and you see this little, what do you call that? I don't even know. A spacer? Spacer. Yeah, so that, body. That, that spacer, we needed to drop the actual gas tank here. You can see from here, Pete, better. You got to drop the gas tank, remove some two straps and then everything comes out. The reason for all the fuss to pull this out is to replace it with White Line's upper control arm and mount, and the improvement over stock of the White Line part is there's gonna be less flex in here. So now we're gonna have a much more solid, defined axle, and that means we're not gonna get as much play in the side-to-side -side action. So we're gonna put this bad boy in, throw that tank back up, and we'll get back to installing the differential. It's finally time for the sexy part of this install. We're gonna bolt up our white line watts link. So I'm gonna start off, we've already, I should show you, put some RTV silicone on it. Now we're gonna close up all that hard work we did on the diff. And before I go mucking this around, I'm gonna grab a bolt so I can catch it, get it lined up. Ken's bolting up the center pivot on our watts link here. This piece really is a work of art. So as the smarty pants of this here operation, I'm gonna to explain to you how this watts link works. It's actually pretty clever. With the panhard bar, it would run across the axle on a bit of an angle. And not only would that allow some side-to-side -side movement of the axle, which isn't ideal, it also had changing roll centers as the suspension would move up and down, which would give you inconsistent behavior at the contact patch. With this Watts Link setup, your roll center is right here in the middle of the cover, and it moves with the axle, which means at your contact patch, your roll centers are staying consistent, and that means you're gonna have really consistent handling behavior. So on the drag strip, that's gonna pay dividends, but also on the road course, it's gonna really help us a lot because instead of having changing roll centers in the back end feeling like it's moving around in a way that may, say, not inspire a lot of confidence, this should really put the power down and make us feel like what's happening in the back end feels the same all the time, and that's gonna let me and maybe even PT rip some pretty serious hot laps. If you don't wanna drop the big bucks on a Watts Link setup like this, they are pretty pricey, but pretty serious too. You can go with the more cost-effective solution of an adjustable pan hardware. This one's from White Line as well. And the reason it needs to be adjustable is that as you lower the rear suspension, the way the pan hard bar works is with the stock bar, it starts to push the suspension one direction a bit. So you end up with the axle being out of alignment with the midline of the car. So to put it back on the midline, you need an adjustable bar like this. And you also gain the benefits of less compliance in each end of the bar, which should help uh, keep the axle you know, staying more consistently on the midline. It won't want to walk left and right so much. So it'll take some of that out of it. But what it, what it won't do that the, the Watts link does do, because you've got these two equal, equal length arms, is this completely stabilizes it left to right. This will still allow a bit of left to right movement. So this isn't as sophisticated, but it's lighter and simpler and more cost effective. So for some guys who aren't trying to optimize rear handling, this is the better solution. We've also put these sweet new chin up bars from right, White Line in the rear lower control arm position. I think I, uh, that's all I got. Uh, but seriously, this is a very beefy rear lower control arm. And the advantage of it is, as you can see with this relocation bracket, it actually moves the uh, rearward most mounting point down, and what that does is create different suspension geometry in the rear end that actually helps plant the axle to the ground when you get on the power. So it's gonna eliminate axle hop, and it's gonna help the car put the power down without the axle wanting to move around in a sort of circular pattern like it does with the regular setup. So much more consistent traction and better traction, quite frankly. They're also adjustable in length, and what that means is you can get the axle running truly perpendicular to the chassis, so if the car wants to crab walk on you, for example, which is often a problem on the drag strip, you can dial that out with, with the adjustability in these arms. And you've got less compliance in these bushings. 
So you've just got less movement in general back here, which again will keep the tire exactly on Exactly what we want. Yep. Time to fill our diff with the good stuff. We're using 75W90 Valvoline Sin Power, full synthetic. And so we put two bottles of that guy in, and then this little bottle of Ford Racing Friction Modifier designed for the carbon fiber clutch packs in there and it'll prevent any kind of chattering. So with that said, we are going with the high tech method of a short hose attached to the bottle because I can get the bottle up in there and feed it in the diff. And uh, we've gotten the drain pan for yes, Dave because- yes. High probability that I'm gonna make a this mess. This does seem like you are gonna make a mess. Yeah, I may end up eating some fluid here. We'll, we'll see if it works. Oh, look at you, oh, yeah, the oh, there you go. Get in the hole. No, it's not in the hole. It's in the hole. It's in the hole, buddy. It's in the hole. It's in the hole. Pete and Ken are done with their ass work, so we're moving up front. And all we're doing up front is changing out this large rear lower control arm bushing. It's the big guy that attaches it to the chassis at the back, and that bushing is massive and has tons of play in it, so getting rid of that play is a good thing for, you know, suspension geometry and keeping the tire on the ground. We're also putting uh, white lines roll center adjusting rear lower ball joints in. All that happens is when you lower a car, the control arm gets pushed up. It's no longer in a good position for roll centers. So you wanna shim it back down with a taller ball joint. This'll do that. It'll put the control arm back into it like closer to parallel. Pretty, you know, not necessarily parallel, but back into more of an OE position. So your geometry is happier, happy geometry, more grip. We're doing it the white line way. So me and Ken have the fun job of removing our lower control arm here. We're gonna start off by, actually Ken's already gone ahead and take, took it off the ball joint, right? Like disconnected it. Yep. So here. we also have the rear bushing there that we have to disconnect and it's loose, but we have one last bolt that we're struggling with right there and uh, we can't get an impact gun on it and we've tried wrenches, they don't work. So it's time to move the front steering rack here, or I guess it's just a steering just rack. Just a steering rack. But it's time to move that bad boy. Oh yeah. What's happening, Pete? We've got ourselves quite the issue here. <laughs> we all think the bolt that's holding the control arm of course is seized into the bushing so that's why it's making that god-awful noise and it pretty much requires max effort here <laughs> to try to get this thing out so i will say this is the first real issue we've run into with rust on the old uh, mullet mustang but we're going to persevere and if i can't get this out we're just going to torch it houston we have a problem so Where's now, the rest of it? now the fun time begins of trying to extract this shit. Okay. Okay. We brought in the big gun, Nam, with his air chisel. Nope. 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 And it's still not moving. Okay. So we're at the final phase of bolt extraction, which is pretty much. Heating it to the point where it burns, where it burns the bolt out. There we go. She's hot. It's on the ground. Finally. Well, great work, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, took about three of you, but I think we've got one side out. The Mustang carnage is getting pretty real around here. These front inner bushings are just a disaster to try to get off the control arm. We're still fighting with like the remnants of one of them here. It's just a battle royale. I got my white line gloves on. <laughs> Adding to the saga that is this Mustang, the lower ball joints are welded in. Tacked in. Our never ending saga continues with these lower control arms. So we finally got everything off as you've seen and now we're on to pushing the white line sleeve that the bushing will go over onto the actual control arm. 
And it's much easier now that I've cleaned it up and uh, Nam set it all up for me. He yes. does the dirty work, I just come in and pump, you know? I think Nam might have cleaned it up too, even though Pete's taking credit on that, but... Uh, oh no, I, I, did the, I did the cleaning work did, before did I left. Oh, okay. I thought yesterday. I, I thought I saying, thought I said Nam with a power coat. That was a sweet setup. Oh yeah, we had to clamp it with a bearing press here yeah. to hold this in place. Hey, whatever yeah. works, right? This ain't no shady tree mechanic bullshit anymore, people. <laughs> Prospect now, APT. Yeah. Grenade! This is what a mangled, rusted out bushing looks like. And before you guys go chirping us, oh, it's supposed to be pressed out, not air chiseled. Yes, we tried that. Trust us, we tried everything in the book to get this to come out, but it was too seized up. Finally, we ended up cutting it with a, uh, with a, a metal saw and then air chiseling it out. So that bushing is gonna be replaced with a white line unit and it's a polyurethane one, which means it's gonna have much better stiffness and less flex. But more importantly, it's super easy to install. It comes, it's a two piece unit that goes like that. And then you just push this together. The old hand press. Yeah, the hand press, in. which nice. usually never works, but there you go. I think this is the last thing we have left to install on the front end, Pete, right? Yeah. We can actually get this car on the ground and get it aligned. But before we do that, I just wanna point out a couple of things that these white line products offer. For one, the roll center bushings, sorry, the roll center ball joints have three positions on them. You can see these notches, and those notches, the lowest one is at stock, for a car that has stock right head. The middle one's for cars that have been lowered 25 mil. The top one is for cars that have been lowered 50 mil or more. We are lowered 50 mil or more, so we're gonna use that top notch. And what that does is it shims the control arm into a better position for suspension geometry. Also worth noting that this bushing is thicker on the inner face than the outer face, so don't get that backwards. Pete may have learned that one the hard way. I most certainly did. And last but not least, these big rear bushings uh, are both caster adjustable with these offset washers. So you can add or subtract half degree of caster. For our car, we're gonna add half a degree because that'll give us better turn-in response, better auto straightening as well. And there's also an anti-dive slash anti-lift characteristic built into this. So it'll help prevent nose dive and nose lift when we're braking and accelerating which should give us more consistent front grip. Oh, now we're gonna slide the ball joint in here in its number three position. Put the bolt through and these control arms are done. Let's see if I can get this in on the first try here. Line it up just like that, there we go. We are on to our suspension adjustment, which is the rear watts link. We measured it from center, and what were we? We were too point, far. Point 0.7 to the left? Yeah. To the driver's side? Point 0.7 to the left, so now what we're trying to do is move the entire axle this way yep. by adjusting the adjustable arms yeah. on our watts link here. So it's actually a simple procedure. Shouldn't be too difficult. Five. So now we're gonna move this thing up and down. Good thing we are on an actual alignment rack. Yeah. So the wheels move independent yep. of each other, which is nice to just kind of yeah. have things settle in. Otherwise, you may have to lift this car up. Roll it and bounce roll it. Roll it, do and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Well, let's take some more measurements and see if we're closer to center here. Eight, that sounds promising. Yeah. So if we're on Eight on that side, we're... And here, we are at eight. Sweet! So what we've been doing actually is measuring off the inner wheel lip and the chassis. So right. that gives us a fixed point yep. and a point off the axle. Makes sense. All right, and visually it so looks Watts, like it's nicely centered yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Watts Link alignment complete. Time to do a quick 
pinion angle check, which we can adjust with our white line upper control arm. It has an eccentric bushing in it that allow us to change the angle of the, the pinion connection here to the drive shaft. So to, to check that angle, we have to use our fancy magnetic protractor here, plop it onto the drive shaft, which gives us a negative one angle. We pop it over onto the pinion flange and it looks like we are also at negative one. The difference between those two is zero. Ideally, you want to be at about negative two degrees of pinion angle for best performance on a road course. The drag guys tend to like more pinion angle than that. Being at zero pinion angle in a static position like this is not ideal because as the car squats, the, the diff is going to rotate upward a bit. So we're going to end up with some positive pinion angle, which isn't ideal for putting the power to the ground. So we'll make some adjustments here to get to about negative two degrees and that'll be our sweet spot. We'll lock it down and then we'll finally get on with an alignment. Master Nam just finished dialing in our alignment here at NV Auto and we are good to go. We started off with three degrees of toe out in the front. So the car was zigzagging down the road on the way here. We settled at just about a total of one eighth toe out in the front, which will help with turn in response, but it'll still track nice and straight. We've got about two degrees of negative camber in the front, which is maxed out on these camber bolts. If we want more, we're gonna to have to go to camber plates, which maybe we'll add those in the future. On the rear, well, it is what it is with a live rear axle. There's no adjustability back there. So we do have a fair bit of toe out in the rear, but that's okay. It'll help us help the car rotate, help PT to do some more drifting. So with the alignment wrapped up, we're gonna do, uh, in the next episode, we'll head to the track, test out all this white line goodness, Test out our fancy alignment and maybe even try out some new tires, buddy. Yeah, man. I look away for a minute and these guys are like blowing their load all over this bushing. It's a liquid filled bushing. Look, look at all this foamy goodness Ooh. down here. Wow. Oh, God, it smells disgusting too. It's covered, oh, man. Oh, yeah. PT. Look at that.